chills run down your spine. You break into a cold sweat. Your heart begins to pound. You are afraid. Tonight, on scariest places on Earth, a possessed prison. The prison could be a very violent place. When you see this picture, there is definitely a god, and there is definitely a devil. Show me a sign now. A creature of the night. This is devil hunt number 10. Did you hear something? Hold still. Be very careful. <gasps> the death tunnels of Paris. This video camera was found deep in the catacombs. I'm standing on dozens of corpses. This is the gate to hell. And this family dares to spend the night in the world's most haunted castle. These castles were made to kill people. Chillingham is the home of the torturers. What is it that makes a place scary? Over the past century, it is said a dangerous energy within a Pennsylvania prison began to manifest itself as an evil entity. One man ventured inside to challenge the demons. The prison let him enter, but will it let him leave? Eastern State Penitentiary, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The prison could be a very violent place. Inmates committed suicide. The system was inherently cruel. The punishments were very, very severe. This is a 12-acre prison with nearly 1,000 cells in it. And it was open for 142 consecutive years. So there were literally generations of people who were housed in these cell blocks. Eastern State Penitentiary housed violent criminals. They were forbidden to speak under penalty of torture. There was an inmate who was tortured to death in a device called an iron gag. He put an iron bar down his throat, and he struggled hard enough that he ended up choking to death. There were other kinds of punishment. Stripping him in his exercise yard, and this was the middle of winter, and pouring cold water over his head. Where else, aside from a prison, would be a better place for a ghost? I think you'd have to say that if ghosts existed anywhere, they would be here. I would even stake, you know, everything I have knowing that there are human spirits of people who have died in Eastern State Penitentiary, and they are trapped there because these spirits have captured them there because they don't want them to leave. <laughs> In 1999, demonologist Lou Gentile ventured inside Eastern State Penitentiary to assess the level of spirit activity. As I was in there, I noticed that the air was very foul, a kind of rotten meat kind of smell. I wound up getting thrown up against the wall and then fell down to the ground. Lou Gentilly believes he captured photographic evidence of spirit activity in cell block 12. Here we can see one globule, which is what spiritual energy travels in. These are usually very violent spirits. He also recorded strange sounds that he believes are demonic in origin. What we got was this. Are you an Indian spirit? Now, this was the answer to our question. Are you an Indian spirit? That's definitely something that's spiritual. There's definitely a god, and there's definitely a devil. 
and you have to be warned about the dark side because it does exist. When I got thrown up against the wall, I vowed that I would go back there and try and figure out what was going on. In 2000, Lou ventured back into the cell blocks to drive out the demonic spirits. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle against the wicked snares of the devil, and please grant us strength through any encounters that we may have with anything evil in this establishment. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. Demonic, and diabolical, and malevolent spirits, they're all drawn towards human tragedy. And a place like this is basically a breeding ground for this stuff. You'd lock somebody up in a cell on death row. They come up with all kinds of stuff to try and sell their soul to the devil because they figured that God has let them down. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take a picture. All right, did you see that? Okay, now this particular globule, that's usually the first sign that there's some form of, of spiritual activity that's going on. If there are any spirits here, show me a sign. Why don't you show me a sign that you're here? Are there any spirits here? In cell block 12, the demonic activity increased dramatically. Spirits, when they manifest, they manifest using electromagnetic energy. Something's pulling energy from that, from this particular area. Yep, yeah, it's right here. Whatever it is, is right here, and I'm going right through it. Oh my god. What? What? Wait, you see this picture? We never got this kind of activity. Alright, let's get out of here. Show me downstairs. Let's go. I don't want to be up here right now. Whatever it is, it wants me back up in that cell. I'll tell you that right now. That's not a good sign when that happens. That's some pretty scary stuff, because I've never had that happen. It figures that it would happen at Eastern State Penitentiary, because this place is extremely, extremely haunted. You know, it may be restricted to the boundaries of that cell block. You know, you just don't know because there may be other spirits that are more powerful that are preventing it from going anywhere else. So its haunting pattern is in that cell block, cell block 12. Lou returned to cell block 12 to banish the demons. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you to show me a sign that you are here. I command you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, show me a sign that you are here, directed towards me and me alone now. If this is a sign manifest. Do you want this place blessed in the name of Jesus Christ? The EMF detector light went off and my hand started vibrating. As soon as I pulled out the holy water, my hand flew across and hit into the wall. As far as I'm concerned, I personally don't want to go back in there. Whatever this is, it likes hurting people. I think that they should close down cell block 12.
Whatever Lou Gentilly believes attacked him still inhabits cell block 12. Coming up next, the Olsons get closer to their night of terror and chilling Ham Castle. The truth is, these castles were made to kill people. They're there to frighten, intimidate. We've got bloody history, gruesome and grisly history. And later... I wasn't hunting it, it was hunting me. Hunting a legendary beast. Remember, stay close. But I felt the, the breeze. Last night we met the Olsons, a family from Illinois now en route to northern England. They're preparing to spend the night at Chillingham Castle, an embattled fortress that's seen centuries of war, murder, destruction, and death, and has the ghosts to prove it. When I first came here, we had someone come and exorcise the ghosts, and he said, I'm afraid I can't touch them, they're too strong. If there's something there, I'd be willing to accept it, more so if, if I was actually shown that there was something there. I believe in ghosts, but I've never witnessed anything. There's something out there. So who else believes? <laughs> <laughs> okay. The Olsen family has no idea what awaits them. At Chillingham Castle. Yeah, we've got bloody history. Horrible, awful, gruesome, and grisly history. They say that this is the place where God chose to look the other way. We've had over a thousand years of killing, murder. We've had people attacking us from all sides. Everybody has this glamorous picture of the British castle, and if you look at the sea and the castle walls, it does look incredibly picturesque. The truth is, these castles were made to kill people. They weren't the deluxe LA home. They're there to frighten, intimidate, show everybody that we are the power. We've got more than you. The reputation of one castle in northern England was built on its power to intimidate. Chillingham. 20 miles from the Scottish border. Far enough in to not be a soft touch. Big castle, strong castle. People left Chillingham alone. It's said by a lot of people, Chillingham is the epitome of evil. It's the home of the torturers. The most infamous of all the torturers was John Sage. They had the worst, the absolute worst torturer there. He was a mercenary and he liked killing. He was good at it. However, during a battle with the Scots, he got a sword wound to his leg that cut all of his tendons. And every time he walked, he would have to drag his foot behind him. And every time he dragged that foot, it reminded him of the Scots that killed his leg. Torture instruments still have dungeons. Muscle rack. Pop your shoulders out of the joint. Snap your tendons. Bring your back. However, there was much worse than that. They called the cage. They would literally just hang you in a metal cage, leave you there. They wouldn't feed you. They wouldn't give you any water. You'd just be left there to be fed on by insects and birds. And slowly you'd starve to death. John Sage's favorite way was using that cage but putting a fire underneath it but not close enough so that it would kill you in a matter of minutes he would have you about 10 foot above it so you would slowly cook from the feet up many still sense the evil that has taken place here over eight centuries i feel as though i want to scream and cry which is obviously how the people felt I feel as though my legs, my back, my stomach, everywhere is just on fire with pain. The spirits that are in here are still here. They haven't gone anywhere. 
You can't have that amount of anger, that amount of viciousness, without it leaving a stain. The stain of the castle's bloody history is not confined to the dungeon. The chapel. There's several bodies in here hanging from the rafters, but not only did they used to hang them, uh, they used to cut the throat and cut pieces off the bodies as well. So they mutilate the bodies. And that's why there's a lot of pain, especially just here. The Grey Room. Now, this is where Lady Grey is said to walk. It's a room that has almost a force feel. If you walk into the room, first of all, you feel unsettled. You feel as if there is a problem. And there is indeed a problem. No one can sleep in that room. People have tried. You never sleep. Things wake you. You feel little hands almost touching. And you think, well, if the ghost's supposed to be a grown woman, why would you feel little hands? If you stay there, if you spend time there, you know that there's something happening. And you know that something's still there to this day. The library. There's something here involving a young boy. There is a young boy being punished here. And I feel that this young boy possibly left... Well, yes, he lost his life here. Regularly throughout the castle, the radiant boy is seen, a glowing figure that travels through walls and along corridors. The pink room. When they knocked down the original brickwork, they found the body of a young boy in the wall with documents that dated back to the Spanish Armada, letters from kings. And yet the thing that nobody tells you is that the radiant boy was bricked up alive. If people do evil things when they're alive, they're going to stop when they're dead. Will the Olsen family survive Chillingham Castle? Fear more than anything is the unknown. It just, like, overwhelms you, and you really don't know why. It gets everything in your body going. I would definitely say my mom's the bravest. Oh, I like adventure. Probably a little too much. The bravest, I would have to say, is David. I'd say it would be me, but it probably depends upon what we get into. Pink Library. Great dungeon. The Olsen family will visit each of these rooms in Chillingham. <laughs> this is going to be so cool. Coming up, the Olsons get closer to their night of terror. The Olsons face their worst fears. And I know that you, you might want to smile and you might feel that this is funny, but there's not many people that come to Chillingham Castle who leave smiling. Will they have second thoughts? I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay, Jared. And the family's night of terror. Hello? Can anybody hear me? Will they survive Chillingham Castle? I just want to go home. Coming up next, a creature of the night. This is Devil Hunt number 10. Remember, stay close together. Did you hear something? The Pine Barrens, a vast wooded area of New Jersey that's supposedly home to a vicious, bloodthirsty creature. Whether the Jersey Devil is fact or fiction, the mere possibility that it might exist is what makes the Pine Barrens a very scary place. In New Jersey, there is a 25,000 acre woods known as the Pine Barrens. The area is officially listed as uninhabited. Some people believe otherwise. I wasn't hunting it, it was hunting me. I saw like this big shadow, kind of like wings, but I felt the, the breeze. 
I've heard some noises that I can't explain. Just caught a glimpse of it, and we stopped right there and just looked at each other. And by the time we looked back, it wasn't there anymore. I was expecting to get my head ripped off. It, it was, it was quiet after that, and I turned around and I didn't see anything, and it, it let me go. It let me go. Locals say a hideous winged creature has lurked in these woods for over 250 years. The Jersey Devil Hunters are determined to track it down. I made the website about a year ago. <laughs> this is what's new to the website. Sightings from 1909 to now. This list is huge. Yeah, this one came to us just the other day. His name is Mike. <laughs> He's 27 and he heard and saw something. There were six witnesses to it. It was about 50 yards away when it jumped over the stream and started running. It wasn't running toward us, but I was scared nonetheless. It all happened in a matter of two minutes, but I can say this, I no longer live in New Jersey and I don't go camping without a gun. Do you know one, Jack? These are all of uh, all the systems we use um, in the event that we would happen to encounter the Jersey Devil. Tonight, the objective is to prove or disprove the existence of the Jersey Devil. The Pine Barrens are amazingly frightening. There have been several nights where all of us have been scared out of our wits. You walk in and you get an eerie feeling of just being watched. And this thing that was up following us in the tree just kept on creaking and making sounds. And we were, I was pretty frightened. I don't know about everybody else, but I'm pretty sure they were frightened too. It is said that the Jersey Devil was the 13th child of a woman known as Mother Leeds. Her one remaining descendant still lives near the Pine Barrens. Well, we've never met Harry Leeds, and hopefully he's going to show us the same exact spot that we think is the house where the Jersey Devil was born. Time check. Do you need time? About 7.30. 7.40. Time is approximately 7.40 p.m. If there's anything uh, that I can help these young folks with, discover where the Jersey Devil is, or any information that I can give them, I'll be willing to do it. Leads guided the group to the dilapidated remains of an old homestead. This here is the original site where the Jersey Devil was born. This is incredible. As you can see, the roof has caved in. This is something I've been looking for since I was like seven years old. There was no name for the 13th child because Mrs. Lee said, if I have a child and it's not a healthy baby, I wish it to be a devil. Remember, stay close together. Are you going to come here and look? What do we got? Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Okay. Look at this. What the hell is this? One, two, three, four, a palm. Almost like a thumb. Well, what's that? And that. Okay, what we found now are two very strange large tracks. The devil hunters found the remains of an animal carcass. Is that a hip attached to it? That's a pelvis. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's a shoulder bone. Where's the shoulder? Right there. Did you hear something? Where? You guys see it? I was Don't go with Isaac, well. Oh, there he is, there he is. You're right. Mike, you filming this? I can't get it. Um, whatever it is, it's getting closer. Keep telling you, I think. Yeah, it is getting closer. 
It looks like a big eyeball. Hold still. And it's moving too. My flashlight. What is it? I'll put a stop to this. Stay on the radio. Be very careful. see the bottom. I don't even know how, how, how deep this is. We've all been there. You take the wrong exit off the freeway, go out a different door than the one you came in. And before you know it, you're asking, where am I? Well, one place you definitely don't want to be caught asking that question is in the endless labyrinth of tunnels deep beneath the city of Paris. Paris, France, a city of stunning beauty and light. But underneath Paris, there is a darker world. the city lies a labyrinth of ancient tunnels and mass graves known as the catacombs. Dangerous and largely unmapped, the catacombs have been sealed off to the public for decades. It is down here that a video camera containing mysterious footage was discovered. This video camera was found deep in the catacombs. It was picked up by a catacomb explorer, some of the people who wandered down there. It was given to me, I looked at the tape. It's very bizarre. It's a point of view shot. The point of view shot is somebody just walking forwards with the camera. So basically he's filming what he's seeing. Endless, very deep inside the catacombs. Other than the point of view shots are pictures of bones. Human bones. And these were the poor Parisians who died over the last thousand years. In 1785, millions of bodies were exhumed from Paris cemeteries and dumped into the catacombs. This person occasionally stops and he photographs bones, often in the shape of an arrow. These arrows point in a direction. Occasionally also, he stops to photograph roomfuls of bones. 
which means that he's very, very deep inside the catacombs. What happened to him? Nobody knows. Filmmaker Francis Friedland was determined to solve the mystery of the lost catacombs explorer. Normally, I'm a freelance uh, filmmaker. I shoot anything from, from fashion to documentaries. Attendez. Je suis pas prêt. I mean, there are 400 miles of tunnels like this. So I brought the tape to a cataphile, an urban explorer. Cataphiles are strange people. They're people who have this passion for the catacombs. These people go down there to find new passages, new entries, new bones, new, new skeletons. Lazar is probably the person in Paris who knows the catacombs better than, than anyone. So according to Lazar, the person is not someone who, who knew his way around. My intention right now is to go down with uh, still photographer Vincent, a friend. I'm also going to take uh, an excellent sound man, Francis, to spend some time in the catacombs and try to solve the mystery. <laughs> There are ways to match things up, to, to, to try to identify where this person was in the catacombs. At times you'll see there's signs, painted signs on the wall, which is not uncommon. People have been painting in the catacombs for, for centuries. So it is possible with these paintings uh, that we may be able to retrace the itinerary to some extent. After about 40 minutes of these point of view shots and these pictures of bones, uh, the person begins to walk faster and faster. Then he begins to run. We hear his breathing get louder and louder, uh, as though something was scaring him. He was, he's, he's frightened, he's frightened. Occasionally he stops, perhaps, to try to decide which way to run among all the many different corridors. He's running faster and faster and faster, deeper and deeper into the catacombs. And all of a sudden, he drops the camera. He just dropped, the camera just drops on the ground and keeps rolling and you see his feet just run away. And he keeps rolling until it runs out of tape. Francis and I are going to now meet the director of the Catacombs Museum, who has nothing to do with the cataphiles, doesn't even want to know about the cataphiles, but he may have some information and hopefully he can let us look at some maps of the catacombs. But alors, tout, tout Paris, in Paris, you have as many miles of tunnels underground as there are streets above ground. No one knows just how many passageways exist in the catacombs, but we believe that they go down over 300 feet. Some are filled with water, and many tunnels have collapsed over the years. It's an enormous maze. We think there are as many as seven levels to it, spreading under the entire city. How do you get into the catacombs? Illegally, of course. Uh, and the idea is to find uh, an entrance. The problem is that the authorities keep shutting him down. Apparently, Lazar has found a new way to get in. But it's way out uh, from the center of town. It's actually on the edge of the city, through the railroad tracks uh, for about a mile. And then this little hole in the ground, and we have to crawl through it. And uh, he could still be down there. Maybe he found his way out. Nobody knows. We'll, we'll try to solve the mystery if we can. Coming up next, trapped in the catacombs. I mean, imagine just running out of batteries on your flashlight. You're dead. You're dead. And you just look at this. You just you lose your flashlight. We're finished. It would be so easy to get lost in the catacombs, to become disoriented, unable to find your way out. You might never be found. This anonymous videotape was discovered deep in the catacombs beneath the streets of Paris. This videographer, he could still be down there. Maybe he found his way out. Nobody knows. 
My intentions now, as, of, as I've seen the tape, is to go down there to try to find out what happened. So we'll, we'll try to solve the mystery if we can. So the trick is to wash not only your feet, but your head. I have never been very deep into the catacombs before. Uh, very few people have. I don't know what to expect. Uh, Already, when you enter the catacombs, the first uh, few hundred yards are already scary. You have to crawl. Uh, you can bump your head. It's pitch pitch black. As you're walking, you 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 trip upon rocks, uh, holes. You can you can you can fall pretty deep. There are 400 miles of tunnels within the catacombs. Many of these passages lead to lower levels. Really, the tunnels are so incredibly vast, our chances of finding the lost man are probably very slim. But we do know by looking at his video that he got as far as these lower levels where we are now. Is it okay? Anybody can get lost in here. Anyone can get lost in here. I mean, imagine just running out of batteries on your flashlight. You're dead. You're dead. It's true. I mean, just look at this. You just you lose your flashlight. What happens? We're finished. We're dead. The explorers travel six miles into the catacombs with no sign of the lost man. This is my own opinion, but this is far too deep for an amateur to be messing around. He must have lost his way down some passage and died. <laughs> After six hours, the group was exhausted and running low on batteries. Francis decided to abandon the search. There's a manhole up there, which is supposed to be open uh, to get out, but apparently it's locked or the was having a difficult time opening it up. We're going to have to backtrack and walk back the five or six miles that we had coming here. That would be hours and hours and hours. And let's hope our batteries don't, don't die on us in the meantime. So close, yet so far. Uh, we're 10 feet from freedom and we can't get out. It's about 60 feet from here to the street. Well, it looks like a manhole. There's no way to get out of there. You need to be a mountain climber to get out of there. I think I saw this on the tape. This, this figure with the arms outstretched, the legs outstretched. And I think after this, the camera turns right.
I'm standing on. Dozens of corpses just walking on them. You can't see the bottom. I don't even know how 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 deep this is. We could be walking on thousands of corpses here. Look how deep this thing is. It looks like the killing fields. According to les arts, if you search through these catacombs, you could find the gate to hell. Perhaps this person found it by accident. This is the gate to hell. involved in this. Very tough. We didn't solve the mystery. I don't think anyone ever will. Just too many, too many, too many miles of, of like, tunnels in there. But we'll never understand what frightened whoever it was that dropped the state. Shepherdess. She was killed in a very brutal way. An asylum of horror. I see patients beaten. It was like hell. Hell on earth. The smell is awful. It's really kind of creepy. A haunted lighthouse. There is something going on out there. The guys, come on up here. I want you to look at this. And the Olsen family arrives for it. We have a place to show you here. It is said to be gone from Chillingham by nightfall, or you will have to contend with the evil forces that walk amongst us. So what is it that makes a place scary? What gives you that eerie feeling which makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up? Fear itself. That's what you'll find at the scariest places on Earth. I'm Linda Blair. Good night.